Okay, I'm going to show you how to make one of these $10 lights into one of these here machine lights. And these things are about 10 watts. They're xenon white and they run cool. Um, the first thing you do is strip the guts out of it because they're pretty much useless. And um, what you're going to find in there is a bunch of LEDs and one of these crappy drivers. And really, all you want is the case. And you don't even need this back part, so get rid of that. So here's, here's the, the body of it. And the first thing I'm going to do is put this in the lathe and turn off these little tiny nubs here on the inside to make this round. Okay, so get this thing checked up in the lathe. The next thing you're going to want to do is rip the stupid CE sticker off of there because it doesn't mean anything anyway. Um, so we'll just uh, turn these little nubs off of here. Just want to make this round so that the heat sink goes in. We're not going to use these threads or anything. I only have this thing gripped uh, on the ID loosely because I don't want to, you know, bend it out around. So I'm taking light cuts here. Okay. Now this thing is round, and we can fit a heat sink in there because. These lights, as they come from China, are very inadequately heat sunk. They run very hot. So I'm going to make two of them here. I got the second one right here. And uh, as soon as I get this one bored out, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you, when, when you get done with this thing, it's going to look like this. Basically, we've just taken these little bosses off the inside here with the, uh, the bracket mounts. Okay. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is clean out all this uh, paint off of these uh, surfaces here so you get a good thermal bond with the heat sink. Now, I use one of these uh, roll lock discs, but you could, you know, use sandpaper or anything like that. This is just a lot quicker. Okay, same thing on this side. Yeah. 
So I'll cut, cut two of those off and then uh, put them in the way. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is face these two chunks off to one and a half inches finished length. And you know, I mean, these aren't critical. One and a half is, uh, it just works out to be a good number for cutting the slots and, you know, leaving a, a little extra. Right now, this is Okay, so I'm going to do that to the other piece, and then we're going to turn the OD down so it fits in, fits in the recess here. Okay, so we got our two slugs here, we chamfered one end, and that's going to be the fin end. Okay, this side is flat. We're going to turn down the OD of this. Okay, so the ID here is 1.940 and we want to 
the depth, we want it a little deeper than this, so we're going to turn it down to 550 on, on you know, for, for the width on the outside. take the chamfer in and put it in here. Leave it sticking out a little. Get your suitable weapon here. Okay, so what I do here to get my width of this cut is I bring this tool up to the end, butt it up against the end. And I bring it back. I have a dial indicator on the ways here. And I'm going to go 550 over. Okay. Make sure nothing's going to hit. Put a score on it. Come back out, just touch it. Now I know the OD of this bar stock right off the right off the piece here is two inches. So that means we have to take sixty thousandths off of it. So I'm gonna set a zero here. I'm gonna come in. Put a cut on. Okay, twenty thousand. Come up to your line. One point nine seven. Okay, now, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a bearing fit here. I'm just kind of screwing around, but, uh, yeah. Fits on there good. Now, the thing you want to make sure of is that it bottoms out on this face, because you got to have good thermal contact between this heat sink and the back of this part here. So we'll do, uh, put a little chamfer on here, and then we'll do the other one. Okay, so here we are at the mill. What we're going to do is turn, thin out these, uh, these blanks for heat sinks. So this is what it should look like now. I just uh, hit these with a little uh, emery paper and the lathe, you know, to clean up the uh, the mill marks. And we're gonna get out our chuck here and our clamps. Get this chip to this table.
first slot, we're going to put right in the middle. Probably need to see this a little better. And since we're milling, we'll lock the head. I usually only lock my, my head when I'm uh, doing milling operations, if I'm drilling or something like that. I just usually leave it loose so I can move the head up and down. So what you want to do here is you want to come down. Here. We come down and we're going to touch, and then I'm going to set my zero on my z axis DRO. And I'm going to come over here. So, this will put the first slot right in the center of, of the blank here. And I'm going to lock my axis, my y axis. And I'm going to come down 50 thousandths. I'm going to lock the Z. And we're going to spin this baby up at 1300. We get our compressed air ready because there's going to be a lot of chips here. Go. Now what I'm going to do is uh, come down to 900 thou, which will leave a little bit of a rim here, and it's just kind of an aesthetic thing. And we're going to be taking 50 thousandths cuts. Team passes here. I'll come back when the uh, first one's done. I'll show you how to move it over. Okay, this is the last pass here. We're down to 900. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, reset my zero on the z-axis. I'm going to unlock my y-axis. I'm going to move it. I'm going to jack this up. I'm going to move this over 350 thousandths. Okay, and then we're just going to do this again.
this goes pretty quick. When you're taking 50,000 cuts, it's a half a turn on the Z wheel, so. And you know, you're not trying to be accurate here until the last cut anyway. Just don't go crazy and dial in 100. Okay, so the way this works is you got one groove down the center and then you got two on either side of it. And that leaves you a thin uh, thickness of a hundred thousandths. So we will uh, press onward here. Okay, here's a little peek at what lubrication does. This particular heat sink I cut with just you know, blowing the chips out with compressed air. And you can see like, you know, it's kind of a crappy finish on the walls of these fins. This one, I put my spray mister on with WD-40. And uh, it's a real good finish. So... This is a practical view of what lubricating cutting stuff does. Compressed air, WD-40 spray mist. Okay, so the next thing I did here, it's kind of an aesthetic thing, but I just like to line these holes up just by eyeball with the center of this rib here and then what I did is I went in with my little scriber and I scribed around this hole and this hole and this hole and this hole which are the LED mounting holes so now what I'm going to do is take this apart and I'm going to center punch these two marks right there and then I'm going to drill and tap them for 440s. Alright, I'm going to drill some holes here. Got my chuck loosened on the table. It's going to load in uh, a drill for 440 which would be uh, number 43.
computer science is a really important subject. Alright, so I'm just going to tap these and uh, then I'm going to bolt them into the uh, housings and then we can start drilling some more holes in them. Okay, so I put the two screws in and that's what it looks like at this particular point. Um, you got to be careful when you're drilling in uh, all the way through because you'll hit the uh, fins and you know if you're not really careful the drill will catch because it's you know going to be on the side so uh, just be careful that you don't break the drill off and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out a hole somewhere here and I'm going to drill in and uh, tap it for a four uh, for a quarter twenty, but it's going to have to intersect the hole here because what I like to do with these is um, uh, I'll eventually uh, drill the center out of a quarter twenty uh, bolt and run the wires through, and that way you don't have them hanging out the back; they'll be going down the uh, the lock line. So, um, you know, you could drill it out the back if, if you didn't uh, want to do it that way, but I think it just looks a little cleaner, um, you know, having the wires inside of the lock line, and, you know, less chance for them to get tangled up and stuff. So, um, I'm going to set that up next and uh, drill this hole, or these two holes.